turn to Psalm 91, and uh, uh, if Brother Fred could put that on the overhead, and if you'll please stand in honor and respect to God's Word. And we'll be looking tonight, uh, trying to find a secret place, and that secret place, of course, is with the Lord, and um, uh, He is our refuge, and uh, as long as you're close to the Lord, you can trust in Him, and He meets all of our needs. Psalm 91, begin verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the uh, pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right side, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shalt bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the otter, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You may be seated, uh, and may the Lord uh, have his blessing upon uh, the word. In verse 2, um, the psalmist was saying to the Lord that the Lord was his refuge and his fortress. And then he called him his God. And David served the same God that we serve today. So not only was he David's God, but he is also our God. God will get us through anything that we are faced with, no matter what it is. If it's a trial that we're faced with, he's going to get us through it. Uh, if it's tribulations that comes our way, he's going to get us through it. And, and so the Lord, he, in that secret place, he hides us in his wings. And in verse 2 also, he says, he ends verse 2 by saying, in him will I trust. Now, I know I'm going to get a little bit off tonight on, on my notes, but... Um, um, this group over here, it's good to see you tonight. And when I was putting all this together, I had no way knowing y'all were going to be here because normally we see you on Sunday, but, but Wednesday night's a little bit different. But um, there are six reasons why we should trust God. And I probably won't get back to my notes uh, that has to do with the Scripture. When we're going through a difficult time, it's hard to trust God. If you look in your coins, it says, in God, we trust. And even sometimes you hear that they're trying to take, in God, we trust, off of the coins. But I think it needs to stay there because we need to know this. No matter who we are, what we're going through, that God cares for us. He loves us more or just as much tonight than he did a month ago. So there's six reasons 
why we should trust God, and there's a scripture passage on each one. The first uh, reason why we should trust God is because he knows our name. Think about it. God knows your name. All of us don't have the same name. I'm glad there's only one Keith McLeod that I know of in this world. Sometimes I can come across someone and they'll say, I know you, and I say, well, where do you know me from? I don't know, but I've seen you somewhere. And I said, no, you haven't seen me. It must be my twin. And then I say, well, if it's my twin, we're in big trouble. Uh, but God knows your name. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 says, but now... Thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Satan will try to come and discourage us. No matter what we're doing for God, he always comes on the scene and tries to discourage us, tries to um, uh, push us down. Uh, but um, uh, the Lord said, and this was thousands of years ago in Isaiah 43, but the Lord says, thou art mine. Guess who you belong to tonight? You belong to God. Now, God is our father, right? Now, what does a father do for his children? Takes care of them. Anything else? I can't hear you, sir. Okay? Loves them? Disciplines them? Yes. Chastises them? Protects? Provides? Yes. Aren't you glad he knows you by name? And when we may not hear an audible voice, but when he calls us to do something, he doesn't call the wrong person. He calls you by name. And he, in, in our, our earthly uh, fathers knows us or knew us. But I like the part that he says, thou art mine. When Satan comes along your way, to discourage you or try to tempt you or run you down, do what I've learned, I've, I've had to learn to do. Just tell him, going back to where Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says that thou art mine, remind Satan who you belong to. Remind him who your heavenly father is. And when he comes your way, there's a few things that we can do. We can read God's word. We can pray. And then we can surround ourselves with, our, with other Christians. And remember, you will, if, you're, if you belong to the Lord, you will always be his, no matter what you do or no matter where you're at. Another thing, another reason why we should trust God is he will fight for you. Uh, Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. So when you're, when you're up against the wall, and you don't know what to do, or the enemies is coming towards you to try to destroy you, remember, God is going to fight for you. And, and by the way, you might say, well, is he always going to fight for me? Yes, he's going to fight for you. Why? Because you belong to him. So when Satan tries to fight against you, remember uh, the victory is going to come from the Lord because at the very end uh, you'll have victory. I like that song that we sing sometime, Victory in Jesus. There's a lot of truth in that song. So he'll fight for you. This is why we should trust God. Another reason why we should trust God is Psalm 139, verse 17. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! So what does God do? Another reason we should uh, trust God is because he thinks about you. 
Uh, sometimes you, sometimes you, when it comes to friends or maybe family, you wonder if they ever think about you, especially if you're separated in distance and in miles. Do they ever think about you? Just think about this. God thinks about you each moment of each day, and he loves you, and you are precious uh, to him. Another reason that we need to trust God is he has plans for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So he has plans for you. Now, do we know what that plan is? If I say, Joan, God has a plan for you, would you tell me what that plan is? Sometimes he reveals it to us. Yep. And sometimes people will say, uh, and especially elderly people like, uh, say, for example, in the nursing home, they'll say, uh, Pastor, I just don't know why God has left me here. I can't, I can't get up on my own. I can't walk. Uh, um, I'm, just, I'm just here. But guess what? God still has a plan for every life, has a plan for that elderly person that may be in the nursing home that cannot take care of themselves. And so always remember this, God has plans for you. And I didn't say has a plan. He has plans, plural, for you. So whatever that plan is, God is going to show it to you when it's the right time for you to understand uh, what your plan is. For example, when you were in grade school and when I was in grade school, did you ever think that you would be working the job you did or the job you're working as an adult? I don't know about you, but I never thought about it. I sure didn't think about being a preacher. I didn't want to be a preacher. I wanted to just live it up. So God's plan is different to us individually because what God's plan might be for Say, Miss Paulette, God's plan for me might be, might be something else. But remember this, God doesn't make any mistakes. He has plans for you. And, and by the way, if he did not have plans and a purpose for you, um, uh, we would not be here uh, tonight. Also, uh, another reason we need to trust God is he is our refuge. Uh, Psalms uh, verse, uh, chapter 62 Verses 6 through 8 says, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In verse 7, And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and the, my refuge is in God. And listen to what it says in verse 8. Trust in Him at all times. Trust Him. Now, when we have a lot of things that's just piling up, piling up, I mean, we all have things that piles up. Uh, I'm not talking about your house. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I, 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 I'm, I'm talking about what we're, what we've been dealt with that we have to deal with each day that sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get overwhelmed. And I'll get to the point that I feel so weak. And I'll say, Lord, I don't know out of all these things which is the number one priority that I need to do. But the Lord constantly tells me, son, you've just got to trust me. Trust him by taking one thing at a time and... In this life, we are overwhelmed by a lot of things. But in that verse 8, trust in him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. And then Matthew 28, 20, another reason we need to trust him is he is always with you. Teaching, uh, this is part of the uh, Great Commission, but teaching them to observe all things whatsoever 
I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So in the psalm that we read as a text, Psalm 91, there's a few things the psalmist was saying about trusting God. Uh, he, he, he basically lists in verse 2 uh, who he's going to trust and that God is our refuge. He is our fortress. Uh, but when we think about a secret place, remember this. He is, this is God, Jehovah. He is a place of salvation. The word dwelleth in verse 1 and abide means to take up residence and drive down your states there. The choice has to be made, and that is what you want. Um, let's look at verses 3 and 4. The Lord is a place of satisfaction. The devil, along with his demons and fallen angels, are out to take away any measure of peace that we as Christians enjoy. Now, people can rob that peace that we supposed to get from God all the time and uh, sometimes that happens but when it happens we need to remember as long as you stay focused on God God will always give you a place of satisfaction verses 5 through 13 he's also a place of protection I want you to notice the wonderful protection that we enjoy. He is our refuge. He is our shield. He is our covering. And he is our fortress. Under his wings, the song goes, Under his wings I am safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild, still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me, and I am under his, and I am his child. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever. Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. And then in verse 11, uh, the psalmist for, uh, says, For he shall give the angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. So he is a place of exaltation. We occupy a place with God greater than the angels. They are our ministers. They are sent to take care of us. Uh, some time ago, I think on a Wednesday night, we talked about angels. Uh, I don't know if everybody believes in angels or not. Uh, the Bible points out uh, um, angels that, protects us, that takes care of us. Uh, probably most of us, if not all of us, can remember a time that the angels took care of, of you. I know there's times that he's taking, the angels take care of me. Remember, angels is not human beings. They are spirits, that they're ministering spirits. And if you go back to Matthew, remember, after Jesus uh, was baptized, and then he went into the wilderness, and when, the Satan, when Satan came upon him and told him if he'd bow down that, he, that Satan would give you all these things, don't you think Jesus already knew that they were his fathers anyway and that Satan had no power over that? And then, not only there, but in the Garden of Gethsemane, as Jesus was getting ready to face the cross, the angels came to minister to him. And through his ministry, the angels ministered to the Lord. And don't you think if the angels ministered to the Lord, that if the Lord has left us back here to continue what the Lord uh, started, uh, uh, now the, he finished his task, but he left us a task that right now is unfinished, and the angels uh, protect us. They take care of us. And also, when it's our time to pass, the death angel is going to come and take us uh, to be uh, with the Lord. Can you, can you ever remember you being in a, a harmful situation? And you probably might should have died. Maybe been injured real bad or even death. For some reason, God spared your life. Uh, I appreciate Brother Ernie and his years that he's been in the Army and, 
and being a Vietnam uh, veteran, and I'm sure there was the same time you go into war, um, gunfire and everything else that goes on, I'm sure the Lord, I know the Lord took care of him there and then because he's here tonight. Think about it. So many of our um, veterans that went off to war, they did, not, they did not have the opportunity to come back to their families. And so no matter what you're going through, remember this. God loves you. He's going to take care of you. And um, the uh, angels are uh, very close to us. I made a comment, last, I believe it was last Sunday, but I felt like the presence, not only the Lord, but the presence of the angels were in the baptistry. And you might say, preacher, you're way out there in left field. I know I'm way out there in left field. But the ball's coming down, and I got my glove, and I'm about ready to catch it. But I know what it's like when, the, when you feel God's touch, and you feel the angels surrounding you. And many times when I'm reading Scripture behind the pulpit, I, a lot of times I don't say it to the congregation, but I just sent there's a, there's a host of angels surrounding me or whoever's preaching when they're preaching the Word of God. Because you know what happens? Every small thing that you think that you do for God, Satan comes right on the scene, and he tries to tear down. But don't give him that authority. We, we need to stay alert, but don't give him that authority. So we need to thank the Lord uh, for angels. And then in verse 14, he is a place of our adoration. We find in these verses that God will, in this verse that God will do for us simply because we set out love and affection upon him. And then, but uh, the psalmist said, um, uh, sits, I wills, and will close. He says, I will deliver. God does deliver us, perhaps every day of our lives, we have encountered dangers, but some of which we didn't even know about. And then he, the psalmist says, I will set him on high. Have you ever been discouraged and needed a lift? Did you find God lifting you up? I have many times. And then the psalmist says, I will answer. I think I know the answer, but church tonight, does God answer prayer? You need to be real careful what you pray for. I've always heard that all my life. And uh, God answered prayer. And he'll continue to answer prayer. So whatever need you might have tonight, remember, just, just call out to him. Say, Lord, I need you. And God knows the desires of our heart. And I'm going to tell you, God answers our prayers many times that maybe we don't know how he answered it, but in his time. And by the way, the reason that I think that God does not answer a lot of our prayers right away is simply because uh, God is having to work behind the scenes to allow these things that you have asked for, for God to bring uh, to you. And then the psalmist says, I will be in him in trouble or be with him in trouble. He is before us. He is behind us. He's, in, he's underneath us. And another I will in this text is I will honor him. God does honor us in many ways. And then he says, I will give him long life. Verse 16, with long life, Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? So if, you're, if you ever get to the point where you feel like that God's not uh, with you and you call out his name for help and he's not helping you, look in verse 15. He shall call upon me, or you shall call upon me to the Lord, and I will answer him. The Lord will answer you. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. Any questions tonight or comments? 
Always remember God gives you a secret place. Sometimes we have to hide. It's hard for the preacher to hide, I'm going to tell you. Sometimes people know every time my vehicle leaves the driveway. I just hope, I just hope every time I go outside and get in my vehicle, I'm not doing something I don't need to be doing, you know. Uh, but it, seriously, it, it, sometimes it's hard to hide. Some of you want to hide. I wish I was in your shoes where you could hide, where I could hide. But uh, it's not what you wear. Sometimes people say, I don't look like a preacher when it's not Sunday or Wednesday. And ask, what is a preacher supposed to look like? I mean, I can't wear a tie. I don't like ties. I can't wear a tie seven days a week. In fact, uh, I don't even like to put on a tie when somebody's getting married. And even sometimes on Sunday, I don't like wearing a tie, but I feel like I need to because of the image I try to uphold. But one day Sundays, I'm going to come in without a tie, and you're probably going to chew me out. But, uh, but anyway, it, what's more important is what's in our heart. All right? Let's stand. We'll be dismissed. Thank all of you for being here tonight. And no matter what you're going through, uh, just call out to the Lord, and when you call out to him, he will answer you. Father God, thank you so much that we have had this time to share from our heart. Father, I know that uh, you're our refuge, you're our fortress. Uh, Lord, you take care of each one of your children. So God, whatever we're going through tonight, Lord, I pray that you'll strengthen us. And Lord, those that may be struggling with uh, sicknesses, uh, maybe uh, with surgeries that's coming up. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'll be with uh, Mike Mullins uh, tomorrow morning early as he goes to surgery at Memorial. Father, I pray that um, you'll just uh, prepare um, his mind uh, emotionally and, God, that you would just take care of him, uh, be with Judy as she waits for him. And, Father, as we uh, do our best to minister to this family in the morning, uh, Father, I pray that the whole in advance that the Holy Spirit would give us the words to say that um, you won't said. And Lord, I pray that this surgery will be successful. Lord, again, we lift up the families who have lost loved ones in the last uh, few days. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to strengthen them. And Father, that uh, they may just hold their heads up and know that one day, Lord, you're going to come back for all of us. And when that day comes, I pray that all of us be ready. Lord, I pray that you'll be with our services this upcoming Sunday. And Father, I pray that if there's someone here Sunday that does not know you as Lord and Savior, as we preach on uh, God's love, Lord, I pray that we'll be able to just um, explain uh, what God's love is all about. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and don't forget to sing your adult uh, Valentine lunch on Saturday.